Hey, Paul, I've got another one. Oh, put it down there. All oh, right. Excellent. Right, thanks very much, Barry. You can go now. Hey, you can go. But what about the programme? Oh, I don't need you for that. You see, inside these boxes, I've got your replacement. My replacement? Yes. Where is it? Not he, it. I'm going to build a robot, Barry. It'll be perfect in every detail. A robot, Barry? It'll never work. See, I told you. Perfect in every detail. Goodbye. Oh. Uh, Barry? Yes? Oh. <laughs> And welcome to Chuckle Vision. In today's show, we'll be taking a look at high technology and I shall be building the world's first robot Barry. Did you call? No, go away. Oh. Now, if you were asked what was the world's single most important invention made by man, you might say the wheel. Wheel I never. I thought I told you to go away. Oh. Oh, come back. Tell you what, you can help me build your replacement. Can I? Oh, thanks. Right. Do you know what high tech is? Yes, it's how to say hello to a cowboy. High techs? No, it isn't. Now, look, I need some leads for this little lot. Go and get me some. Leads? Yeah, you'll find them outside. All right. I've got it. See, I'm not useless, am I? What's that? It's a lead. No, oh, the lead I want is to pass a current through. You could pass an orange through that easy. No, an electrical current. It's a wire with a socket on either end. Sockets? Oh, I know what those are. Little socks. I didn't see any of those out there. Oh, OK, I'll do it myself later. Now, where was I? Uh, a little further to the right. Oh, yes, thank That's you. That's it. Now, the most important discovery to date is the microchip, followed by... The microfish. The microfish? Yeah, Michael Fish, the weatherman. Look, I'm trying to do a programme on microtechnology. Your crow what? Techno... Oh, never mind. Look, just unpack this little lot and leave me to get on with it. All right. And be careful, these are fragile. It says Japan on the box. Well, that's English for fragile. Oh, I'll be careful. Good. Now, the word compute means to reckon. And it sounds like there's a lot of reckon going on over there. So while I sort that out, here's the McChuckle Brothers using the earliest form of computer known to man, the abacus. Be careful! Aye, aye, aye. see. Six thousand and three. Aye, 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 aye. aye, aye. Six thousand and four. Aye, 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 aye. Six thousand and five. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 hi, hi, oh, 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 hi, Invented over 5,000 years ago. Who by? Well, I don't know who by, do I? It was somebody in China. Oh. They used it for sums and that, you know, adding up and taking away. Oh, so it's a Chinese takeaway? Sort of, yeah. Yes. Anyway, in the Far East, they still use them today in preference to the pocket calculator. Why is that? They haven't got any pockets. Well, that's a good enough reason, I suppose. Now, the abacus was man's first attempt at high technology. But as you see, it did have its limitations. So man decided to invent the computer. Who is a working man who travels to work on a train? Not commuter, computer. Oh. Now, to understand the computer, it is essential to have an understanding of the human brain. Now, this is the brain and this is the microchip. At first sight, they both look very different, but look closer. There. Now you can start to see the similarity. They've both got squiggly bits. Now, once scientists had realised this, they were just two steps away from the computer. One. Two. And here they are. Now, these are highly advanced scientific instruments and they're ideal for solving the problems of the world. Five million points has zapped him that time. Be careful. That's a highly sensitive machine. I thought it was Space Invaders. Now, this computer has what is known as a 64K memory. What does that mean? Here, I'll demonstrate. Watch. Look at that. K, 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 K. There you are. 64Ks. Hey. But here at ChuckleVision, the robot I'm going to build will have a memory far superior to that. In fact, he'll be able to memorise every single letter of the alphabet. Great. When do we start? Right now. Follow me. 
OK. Hey, can I open this one? Of course you can. But be careful, won't you? Yes. Right. Now, let's have a look at my blueprint. What have we got here? There's nothing in here. Of course there is. Go have a good look. Well, I'll have a look, can I? <laughs> There's nothing in here. Yes, there is. Keep on looking. Oh. Is that it? Of course it is. It's very nice. It isn't very nice. It's inside the box. Oh. There it is. Do you realise that's worth millions of pounds? This little piece of silicon is to be the brain of my soon-to-be-constructed revolutionary robot Barry. Well, it doesn't look much to me. Right. Be careful. One tiny scratch on that could be disastrous. You just hang on to it carefully while I put the robot together. Right, OK. Well, as you can see, it's going to take us a little while to put this robot together. So, in the meantime, here's Armchair Theatre. Fivers for free. It seemed like magic. He said it was to do with a microchip. You know, the clever part of the computer. He said it had been sent it by an uncle who worked in America. But nobody believed him. Well, not at first. He really was dead brainy, though. You could tell by the really serious glasses he wore. His name was Magnus, but everybody called him Mastermind, partly because he really was very brainy, and also because he was called Magnus, like that I've started so I've finished bloke who was on the telly. The first time anything strange happened was at school. Some kids were supposed to be working on a computer when Mastermind decided to go over and see what they were doing. Suddenly, the screen went all fuzzy and nothing worked. Not the keys, not anything. Magnus said they must have wiped the memory, but they all said that they didn't. The bell rang and Mr Hughes said, leave it, we'll sort it out later. After school, Magnus has to go to the supermarket with his mother to help her with the groceries. They get to the checkout and unload the goods from the trolley onto the counter. And it's one of those where you have to pass the goods in front of a special beam of light, which is linked to a computer which shows what it is and how much it costs. As soon as Magnus stands by it, it won't work at all. Not a sound, not a bleep. While everybody's trying to work out what's wrong with it, Magnus's mum sends him to fetch some plastic bags. As soon as he's gone, it works perfectly. Next morning, he's walking to school with a mate of his, and he's telling him about the checkout and the school computer both going wrong. Any computer I go near just goes berserk. I think it must be this microchip that my uncle sent me. He shows Denzo his microchip. Denzo is not particularly bothered, but he tries to show some interest. OK, let's test it out. Where's the nearest computer? They're walking past some shops at the time where Magnus suddenly points to a bank. There, I suppose, there's a computer in that cash machine. Perhaps we can get it to squirt out a few fivers. But Magnus Mastermind is sure you have to have a proper plastic card to make it work. And he's worried, because every time he goes near a computer, it doesn't work. Go on, they can't blame you if you just walk past it. A mastermind hates doing anything that might get him into trouble. But he decides to try it once. So with the microchip clutched tightly in his hand, he walks up to the machine. The plastic cover slides up, there's a whirring noise, and out pops a fiver. Denzo's dead excited by this and quickly grabs it. Go on, try it again, then you'll have a fiver as well. Mastermind's a bit put out by this, because he thinks the fibre should be his. Anyway, Denzo persuades him to walk up to the machine again. This time, nothing. Just a little message on the green screen, out of order. Suddenly, Denzo remembered there was another bank with a cash machine a few streets away. So they leg it round there, and luckily, there's no one about. Mastermind approaches the machine, up slides the little plastic cover, and out pops a fiver. And then, on the little green screen, the message, this machine is out of order, 
Your nearest machine is at our High Street branch. But there's no more time before school. After break, there's a music lesson with a visiting music teacher who no one can stand. Because he keeps trying to get them to sing dreamy songs from long ago. <sighs> now, as there's no piano in that class, he has to use an electronic keyboard. So the class are all standing round, and he's sitting there playing with his eyes half shut as if he's in love, when he asks Mastermind to come out and turn over the music for him. Well, he only started the drums off, didn't he? You see, there's a computer in the keyboard. The music fella went bananas and started fiddling with all the switches. He managed to start it up again. But this time, it started belting out rock music so loud, you could hear it the other end of the school. Magnus Mastermind panicked and dropped the all-important American microchip. Just at that moment, the headmistress entered, and so they all had to study their music sheets while she had a few words with the music master. And that was that. Mastermind couldn't find the microchip when class was over. And the funny thing was, nobody ever saw the music fella again. Apparently, he gave up teaching. He said he didn't need the job anymore. He'd found a way of making as much money as he wanted whenever he wanted. Something to do with an American microchip and a computer. Paul, can I come back now? Not yet. I'm just getting to the very delicate bit. Oh, OK. Paul? Not yet. How much longer do I have to wait out here? Not long. I'll tell you what. You count to 1,000 and then you can come in. 1,000? Yeah. OK. One, two, three, four, five, six. What? How many houses are there in this street? Um, about 30. 30? Yeah. 31, 32, 33, 34. What is it? How many pennies are there in a pound? Um, 100. 100? Yeah. 101, 102, 103, 104. What? How many fan letters have you had this week? Oh, I know that exactly. 720. 720? Yeah. 721, 722, 723. <laughs> How many fan letters have I had this week? One. One? Two, three, four... Welcome back. Five. Well, we've got on swimmingly here. While you've been away, I've managed to complete my replica robot Barry. And he's perfect in every detail. There. How about that, then, eh? And let's compare it to the original. Barry? Yep. What do you... As I said, a perfect copy in every detail. What does it do? Well, it can do anything you can do. But it hasn't got a brain yet. As I said. What's this red button for here? Wah! Whatever you do, don't touch that red button. Why not? You press that red button, he hasn't got a brain yet, and he could go scurrying about madly and we'd have no chance of stopping him. And we don't want that to happen, do we? Oh, no. Sorry, Barry. Oh, oh hey, now I you've done it. Red. Steady, 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 steady. I didn't mean to. Get it. Oh, hey, get him. Get him. Go, go catch him, go catch him. Right, go catch him. Come on.
sorry now, look. Who is it? Go on him. Will you? Oh, come away. I'm stuck. Come away. Come away. Where's he going? Hey. Where's he going? Watch he's him. Off. Watch he's him. off. He's off. He's going round there. Go Come on, on, round here, round here. Right, okay. you ready? Here, get up here. Get up. Right, get up. Get quick, up. quick. Can you get him? Can you get him? Get him. Quick. Okay. Get him. Get him. Yeah! <laughs> We've got him. <laughs> Good. That's... What did you? What are you doing? I was going to switch him off. Oh, you can't do that. You let him out of here, he'll go running off again. Oh, well, what are we going to do? We'll have to wait till his batteries run down. Oh. Keep your eye on him. Make sure he doesn't do anything silly. What, like a Bruce Forsyth impression? No, oh, sillier than that. He could destroy the world if he wanted to. Bruce Forsyth? Oh, the robot. Oh. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. See you in seven days. Yeah. I hope. Hey, steady, steady, steady. steady. steady.